Good morning guys, welcome to Tomatoes, Poppies, and Everything Gardening. I'm Heather, and today is, I don't know, it's mid-September. Um, it's probably like the 14th this morning, it's a little bit early, and I was going to do a garden tour of my two decks and my um, green stalks today for you. However, late, late, late last night, Mr. Tonto, my dog, made a huge mess here on the deck. I want to show it to you before I clean it up and before I actually do the garden tour because this is real life in gardening you have things that happen and for me it's this dog that I love to death but he likes to make a lot of gardening messes and destruction for me so let me flip the camera around show you Mr. Tonto this morning because he doesn't seem to be concerned about causing a lot of havoc and then we will clean up and get on with the garden tour so there is the guilty boy, Tonto. Tonto, listen to mom. Who made this mess? Who did it last night? Who did it? Yeah, I know. He tumped over three big planters. They were on their side when I came out here to make him come in last night. And he was standing right there, right beside him in the huge mess. So I swept it up a little bit last night. Today I'm going to reseed because I had lettuce seeds in here. And I guess I have to come up with another solution on the fertilizer because Tonto likes to try to sniff it out. Uh, I usually use a lot of leaf compost back here in the backyard for this very reason because he's a very, very sneaky boy. Right, Tonto? can see he's kind of healed up from that area on his face from a few weeks ago. He's doing a lot better. He's up to mischief, so he's definitely feeling better. Okay guys, I'm going to clean up and then we will have a nice little garden tour because there's lots of changes on the green stuff. You can see planters are back together, looking okay. Um, we shall see. So we're on the upper deck. Um, this is part of my three-part garden tour that I do usually just once a month. I'm going to try to maybe do it twice a month eventually, but um, we'll just start here where the mess was. I do have lettuce and catmint in here right now. Uh, leftover, the cat lettuce is left over from an experiment during the summer, but I did reseed with the same lettuce and also some kohlrabi seeds. I will need to redo that because remember, Tonto dumped the container over. Um, some random sedums here. A few little cuttings of impatience. You can root impatience very easily. Um, this is pineapple sage. And I'm going to do this experiment one more time. I did it last winter where I tried to overwinter pineapple sage in a container on my deck. This time I'm going to insulate it a little bit better. Push it all the way under the bay window. Fingers crossed. Probably won't work. These are actually um, babies, like seedlings, that came off of my plants out front that I put in this pot late spring. It smells wonderful, and when you grow it in part sun like this, the leaves get really big. Strawberries are starting to recover. This is, uh, I don't remember the variety, but they're ever bearing. Um, that was a big project I did about six weeks ago where I reshuffled a bunch of strawberries. Um, this is a white petite rose that I rehabbed and brought back probably from the brink of death. I don't know if you remember that, but I had cut it down very severely, very minimal foliage left, if any, and you can see it's doing great. A couple different gypsy peppers over here and a lunchbox pepper, some basil cuttings I just stuck in the pot after rooting. This um, Persian shield broke off. I think the squirrel did it. So I stuck him down in this ice plant pot because it's been staying really moist. And um, I don't know, I thought it would help him root. Maybe I'll bring him in for an indoor plant. Um, that does make a beautiful indoor plant. Uh, this is chocolate Tasmanian back here. And um, I did root, I think that's Queen Siam. I had relocated that, those little starts from somewhere. And then for some reason, I'm keeping this Ace 55 because 
there are a few uh, babies on here somewhere. Um, I can't find them right this second. There are a few, and I thought, well, it's been here forever. Why don't I just let those develop and mature? But I did seed um, carrot seeds down in there. Um, you do see some thyme cuttings there. That's just because I use the water from washing thyme, and that's why it looks like that. But I do not see any germination on the carrots yet. Tomatoes and carrots are really good companions. There's Mr. Tonto. Over here are my brassica starts and someone has been coming over and just eating away. I'm not gonna pull these yet because you can see there's still some little growth trying to come out. But some look okay, some look really rough. If one of the local stores has a deal on like a six pack for, you know, five bucks, I will consider buying some starts. I will not pay six dollars for one broccoli start. That's just kind of against what I believe because I can go buy organic broccoli for cheaper. Um, here's a lemon verbena I got on clearance a while back. I'm going to put him into a houseplant pot and take him inside for the winter. Um, but he will lose his leaves. I forgot what it was. I've overwintered lemon verbena before, but they do drop their leaves. I don't know if it's a daylight thing or a temperature thing. I'm going to look into that. I could probably keep him as an indoor house plant if I kept him somewhere really warm and humid. Um, but you can overwinter them in the garage, and that's what I've done in the past. They will lose all their leaves and go dormant, but then they will come back to life. I still have a few astilbees left in these little containers from spring I need to plant. This was a ginger experiment that I'm ready to end it. My marmalade plant will also be going back in in about four weeks. I have quite a few plants out here on the decks that will be going inside. If you remember, he was indoors and he developed spider mites. You can see some of the old spider mite damage on these leaves. It's like little pinpricks of white. My fig here, he will also go under the bay window to get protected because he's in a pot. We're a zone seven. I believe this variety is a zone six or seven. So whenever you have something in a container, you need to take away at least two zones. So for me, I usually don't plant things um, in a container that are a zone five or below. I think I do maybe do fives, but not, um, you know, like a four. That would not work here. So, um, yeah. That's what's going on with him. He will get overwintered over here under my bay window and insulated with uh, mulch or leaves. There's my one strawberry that survived, the seascape variety. And this is what a Persian shield looks like when it's in a perfect environment, like living its best life. My indoor one this summer does not look like this. It looks like uh, twigs with dry leaves. All right, Tonto, are you living your best life? Getting into trouble? All right, so I think that's about it on the deck, except for, of course, my ginger. I have another pot of ginger out front that I just relocated now that uh, it's cooled off a bit. Gerber Daisy, Impatience, a Corabelle, of course, uh, strawberries here and lemon thyme, and one lonely celery. Need to work on this area, so we probably shouldn't even look at it. It's in need of some care. Let me squeeze past the table here. Did want to show you a couple of things over here. So I have this Luna moth that we found. It is completely dry. Um, it's been dead for a long time. Uh, I was just going to leave it somewhere in nature, you know, just kind of go back to nature. I don't feel right keeping it in the house, even though it is completely, you know, passed on. They don't live very long at all. It's really rare, I think, to see these guys. But they're so pretty. It's such a pale, beautiful, limey, greenish blue. And then also, I have a collection of parasitic wasp on hornworms because they have been non-stop. Non-stop the last two weeks I have been picking hornworms off my peppers. Some tomatoes but mostly peppers. 
So I don't want to destroy the parasitic wasp, so I just kind of put them here out of the way if they're still very active. If they're not active, I just leave them on the plant. So now we're going to go down to my lower deck, and this will be uh, the second part of this garden tour. And it's pretty much the same as last time, except I did some cleanup for you guys because we've had a lot of storms. Um, I did clean up my fern here, my columbine, and I've got another corbel. And this is a perennial Cranesville uh, geranium. So it's not like the annual geraniums. This is a perennial geranium, which is different, and you can put those um, in the backyard with your dog, but not the annual ones. Those are toxic. Dragon's Breath Celosia is still looking pretty. have done literally nothing to it. I need to cut all this basil down and harvest it because my poor little lonely little uh, Brussels sprout there, he's not getting any light. He's barely growing. They are slow growing, but he needs light. So I need to do that. Um, let's see. I think this is a poblano. He is not as big as my poblano out front that's in full sun with better uh, soil and fertilization. I cannot hardly fertilize in the backyard because okay. of him. Alrighty, so just a few peppers in this area. I think I've got six total. Uh, this guy will be going in soon. This is my dwarf pomegranate. He is so happy out here. He looks beautiful. He does not look like this in the house. Towards the end of winter, he looks really, really sad. Also, my daughter's um, dragon fruit will be going in. He also will need to go in probably mid-October. Um, probably going to have to come up with a better trellising system. Maybe I'll make a video on that. But um, last year I gave him all new soil. I don't know if I'll do that this year when I bring him in. We'll see. Here's another fish pepper here in this planter. There's some um, snapdragons that are kind of like in a dull phase right now. They're just kind of putting on some new growth. Um, looks like they've already dropped their seeds. But look. They will try to bloom again, I think, before winter. And then this mess here is to be ignored. I've been saying for the last two tours I'm going to take all this out, and I am. I just haven't got around to it. These tomatoes all need to go. I've learned my lesson. Do not grow tomatoes in self-watering containers. Big no-no. Will not ever do that again. You want well-draining soil. The soil has stayed way too wet. I am going to relocate these zinnias out front, though. And then the last thing to look at here, uh, part of our tour of the decks, are the green stalks. So you can see, wow, look at that tomato there. That's because it is time for me to really evaluate if a tomato plant needs to come out or should I keep trying to keep it alive and I decided for a couple of these in the green stock I was going to prune off all the yucky growth or dead growth really and maybe try to keep some of the fresh newer growth going and see if I could get a few more tomatoes out of it before winter uh, peppers you know they're coming into their own they're really doing well uh, they like that it's starting to cool off a little bit now I did have a lot of pepper damage on this green stock about a week ago and I lost quite a few peppers and some of the branches but now it looks okay it looks pretty steady um, let's see what else I have a video coming up on harvesting stevia and making extract and um, you can see it's starting to put on new growth but all this got cut I cut off a ton of like stevia you want to do that before it flowers I have some out front that's starting to flower have a feeling it's going to be a beautiful flower so I really want to see that I've never grown stevia before I've never processed it so this is my first year doing that um, the green stock here in the back I've been picking these dwarf eggplants um, kind of getting tired of trying to figure out ways to use them I don't know if I'll grow this again but we can talk about that in the winter when we have to make a decision for next summer um, I did get some edamame to grow it's not going to be enough it's going to be like enough for one person to have a serving. Um, I need to reevaluate next year. How can I do better with edamame? Because I love it. We love it as a family. Um, so I need a lot of it. I probably have to go to Costco and get a big bag because I don't have any 
this is it. My one experiment at Ivy's didn't go well, so whatever I get off this green stock, that's it. Um, another pepper, and then I have the Alma paprika pepper, which I'm um, not pleased with it. I'm not going to grow this variety again. This is second year in a row uh, of poor, minimal production. And then I have just some dwarf beans on here, kind of climbing different things. Forgot the name of it, but I'll try to mention that in the next tour. Um, still growing out my African blue basil here. Um, this is going to be for indoor cuttings, so that I will have some for next year. And we'll just kind of end right here in the corner. Um, this is a patty cake. Um, blackberry. You can see it's starting to put on some new fruit for fall. It's really like in this location. Um, I did have it over there in the middle section bed, um, but I think it's happy right here next to my Blue Girl Rose, which is putting on new foliage. I do not regret buying this rose. It's really given me a lot of joy. Oh, look, there's a bud. Yay. So, I harvested so much holy basil out of here a couple weeks ago. I have holy basil all over the whole property, everywhere. Front yard, backyard, side yard. Um, and it just keeps going. So, I was going to tell you something. Oh, I also harvested most of the china aster that was on here. And I made a beautiful bouquet. And I will, maybe I'll put some pictures here to end the video. You can see that. Um, Alright guys, so... That's it. A super quick.